So, uh, good morning, OpenStack. Um, I'm glad to see that at least some people are dedicated enough to show up for the first session after Stack City. So good on you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm Ryan uh, from Red Hat, and this is my colleague Victoria, and we're going to be talking about Zakar for microservices, uh, notifications inside of OpenStack, Internet of Things applications. Um, and if uh, you guys are interested in any of these things, we have Zakar work sessions, and there are notifications work sessions that are going to be happening throughout the conference. So if this interests you, we hope to see you there. And uh, so this is going to be broken down into a few parts. Uh, in the first half, we've got uh, some looking ahead into the Newton and beyond for Zakar, um, uh, messaging patterns and different ways that you can use Zakar for work queues and other things, and just an overview of the history of Zakar and how it works and why you would, be why you would use Zakar instead of, say, AMQP. And in the second half, we're going to dive in for use case examples with how Heat uses the car already for notifications, um, how they're looking at using it in the future, and where the car fits in into the kind of user experience of production OpenStack. And an example with the Internet of Things dealing with different devices sending back data and receiving commands and taking advantage of those messaging patterns we start with. And so now I'll hand it over to Victoria. So uh, again, thank you very much all for coming. <laughs> it's like after that party yesterday, we weren't expecting too much people to attend. Um, so let's start with what is Zakar. Uh, please, how many of you knows what Zakar is? Please uh, raise your hand if you know Zakar. Okay, one, two, three, three people. Okay, so this brief introduction is going. We we knew that we were going to need this. So. Um, so where is Zakhar? Here we have the, the mission statement. Uh, of course, I'm not going to read this for you. I'm going to give you the short version. Uh, Zakhar is the messaging and notifications uh, service built uh, for OpenStack and by OpenStack. Um, the main goal that Zakhar has is to connect applications uh, running on the cloud and in OpenStack itself. Um, there are several uh, messaging alternatives but uh, Sakar has been built to work on the cloud uh, specifically. It is not as other uh, messaging queues that are around that has not been built with this use case in mind. Um, so what Sakar is not? Um, Sakar is not a replacement for RabbitMQ or Cupid. We had got this question a lot of times. Um, there may be some uh, cases in which the use case for Sakar or RabbitMQ and Cupid uh, would overlap, but uh, it is not the main goal of Sakar uh, to be a replacement for, for one of these. Uh, if you are familiar with the OpenStack infrastructure, you would know that we are using RabbitMQ or Cupid for um, communication between components, and of course it's highly unadvised that you use Sakar for this. It's like, it is not. Sakar has been built um, with the web developments in mind, um, and uh, we provide a set of tools that uh, are not good for uh, RPC communication, that kind of things. Um, well, also, uh, we have got several questions with regards to the uh, data structure we are using. Sakar is not a queue service. Um, we use the concept of queue, but it, um, it's just, you know, um, a way of handle resources, but it doesn't respect FIFO by default. Uh, you can enable that, but it's not uh, how, what you are going to get like out of the box. And finally, uh, it is not an email service. It is not an IMAP implementation, and uh, you are not supposed to use it like that. So uh, let's get a brief um, overview of the features uh, we support. Uh, Sakar is a multi-tenant, uh, sorry, as a multi-tenant um, component. Uh, we have integration with Keystone and we use Keystone project IDs in order to isolate our resources. This means that um, you are the only one who, that will have access to the message you are sending to the queue. Um, it is also a component-based um, application. Um, you can you have different alternative for storage backend and transmission protocols that you can choose depending on your use case. 
and if there is uh, one storage backend you need or one transmission mechanism you need that is not yet supported in uh, SACAR, you can easily deploy that, uh, sorry, develop that. Um, we also have support for a variety of messaging patterns, uh, including um, task management, point of communication, and broadcasting. Um, SACAR also has built-in notifications. Um, you can subscribe to a queue uh, in SACAR and get messages every time a new message comes in. Um, we guarantee at least once delivery. Uh, this is something you have to take into account when uh, developing your application because uh, there might be a possibility that you get a message twice. Um, in the messaging patterns, you, in messaging system, sorry, um, you can have at least one delivery or almost one delivery, and uh, we consider that the best uh, option between those two it was, okay, let's get redundant messages, but let's avoid uh, losing messages. And finally, um, SACAR is horizontally scalable. Uh, we have a feature that is nine pools uh, that allows you to have uh, different entry points and uh, storage location for all the uh, data you're handling. Now, uh, let me introduce some use cases. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time in this slide, given that uh, Ryan Hayes has some use case more interesting to introduce you later on. So um, let's see briefly what is about one of them. Um, perhaps the most basic one is uh, messaging for the cloud. Um, imagine this scenario you, that you are a web developer and that you want to deploy you know, um, your web application in a distributed manner. And um, of course, so if you want your um, application to, to have the components communicated between each other. Uh, in, if you don't have SACAR, then uh, the way to have this working is for you to you know, launch a new instance and uh, uh, deploy a messaging solution there, uh, configure the network, um, of course take care of all the burden of the configuration options that you have to, to handle there. And uh, you have to do this uh, several times you know, uh, if you have different applications with different uh, messaging needs or message pattern to follow. And um, if you had SACAR, the only thing that you need is, you know, to know the endpoint of SACAR and just make your uh, application to communicate using that endpoint. And so um, it is a good uh, way to have, uh, to develop self-healing applications. Uh, imagine this is a scenario as well in which you have your application in several nodes and one of the nodes goes down. Um, in a regular case, you would need, you know, to resend all the messages like manually and to, you know, pray that when that node goes up, up and you get all the messages you were expecting to get, everything works smoothly. Uh, in the case of using SACAR, the only thing that you should uh, consider is, you know, to continue with the next item in the queue and just keep moving on with whatever you were doing. Um, SACAR is also very helpful when you have to handle great amounts of data. It allows you to load balance uh, the, the amount of data you are receiving for your application, and it avoids uh, overloading your application with a lot of you know, um, data to process. And uh, the final one is intercloud communication. Uh, this use case arises um, recently with uh, the appearance of new platform as a service project in OpenStack. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Trove, for instance, which is database as a service, uh, Sahara, Octavia, Manila. These all projects uh, have a um, characteristic in common, which is they all need case agents running within the cloud, and they need to have those case agents communicating with uh, the control plane. Uh, you could use SACAR to uh, communicate between the control plane and these case agents. And also uh, to surface um, events to the final user, like in the case of if you use a car with Horizon. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about uh, how SACAR is um, architecture. Um, currently in our code, we have um, three layers. 
Uh, one is a transport protocol in which we have support for whiskey, uh, web socket, uh, web hooks, and email. Um, all the clients communicate directly with the transport protocol of your choice. And all the requests are forwarded to the API, which in turn send all the data to be stored in the storage of your choice. Um, we have different storage uh, options for you to choose, including Redis, MongoDB, and uh, well, we also have support for SQL Alchemy, sorry, for MySQL, but um, we strongly advise that it's not used to store data, but to be used in the control plane. So, well, um, the storage backend of that would, you will choose, of course, will depend on um, your use case in particular. But um, we have a new feature that is called uh, Flavors that um, allows you to place the queue uh, you are going to be using to the storage backend of your need uh, according to whatever you need, if, for instance, uh, high throughput or uh, high availability. Um, we mark these storage backends, for instance, Redis has in memory support, and MongoDB has persistent support. So um, this is something that you can use uh, as well, depending on your, your kind of application. Um, now let's uh, give a brief overview of how uh, Sakar has been evolving. Uh, Sakar used to be named Marconi in the past. It, it yeah, it was it's a long story. Um, and it started with having support for MongoDB, SQL, Alchemy, and Redis for the um, data plane. We noticed that transactions were not very good handled for MySQL, so we uh, stopped supporting it in Kilo, uh, which we decided to have SQL, SQL Alchemy only for management. Um, we started implementing um, the beta support for WebSocket in Kilo, which later on in Liberty was highly available. And the latest addition in Mitaka is um, full support for WebSocket, and you can transmit uh, plain messages and binary messages using the message pack uh, in our latest version in order to save some resources in transmission. So um, now what, what is uh, next in the Sakar future, which are uh, the things we will be discussing uh, in the design sessions uh, that we have on uh, Thursday. Um, we are aiming to see uh, SACAR to be, um, to support having notification within OpenStack. Uh, you have, uh, when you deploy an application, uh, like, I don't know, an automation script uh, that would use uh, Nova or Cinder or any other company in OpenStack, uh, you need to keep polling, and you have several users polling to the same endpoints, and uh, that would be um, the overhead that that produced would be minimized using SACAR WebSocket uh, transmission protocol. And you only would need to hear for notifications that you avoid, you would avoid so much polling and so much uh, resource wasting. You know. Um, we are also aiming to standardize the message format we are handling uh, so we can see notifications as, you know, as a real API in which uh, you have backward compatibility and such. Uh, messages are not only written by people, but also uh, by your application you are developing. So uh, we are looking forward to start working on that. Uh, we are also um, working on the dead letter queue concept is uh, for messaging is a place for failed and or undelivered messages. Um, this would allow us to uh, stop, you know, uh, getting so many requests or resending messages all over again. You will only have that this queue in which you can access and restore whatever you needed to to restore. And the final is an addition to the subscription endpoint, in which uh, we we will add confirmation when you subscribe to, to one of the queues. Um, now let's see briefly how um, it is the message's life cycle. Um, this will help illustrate the, the use case that Ryan is going to introduce after this. Um, in, imagine this scenario in which you have, I don't know, um, web app processing in the background. For instance, I don't know, your um, home banking 
Um, you will have a sender and a worker. The sender will send a job, let's say, with ID one, two, three, and uh, the worker will be listening in that queue um, to get that job processed. Uh, once it receives the job, um, we have a feature that is called claiming. Uh, your worker will have to claim that in order to make that message invisible to the rest of the worker that you have working there. And um, once you have uh, processed that message, um, you delete the message. You have to do this in order you know, to avoid uh, getting duplicated messages. Um, if we now we are going to talk about one of the um, parameters we have for all our resources, but claims have an expiration time. So if that expiration time uh, pass by and you haven't delayed your messages, uh, your message is going to be available for to processing after that, and uh, you will get the risk of getting uh, redundant data. So you delay the message and you continue processing whatever you have to process. Um, as I was saying, all our, our resources have expiration and lifetimes. Uh, we have a, a TTL uh, parameter for subscriptions, claims, and messages. Uh, since we consider that having you know, stale data is worse than having no data. So uh, this is something you have to take into account when developing your applications uh, to interact with Sakar. And uh, OK. Now is, um, Ryan is going to introduce you to some use cases that uh, have been going on in the last uh, release for Sakar. So Thank you. all yours. Um, and so for the first, we're going to talk about a couple other message patterns. And then we're going to dive into how Zakar is being used in Heat and uh, is going to be used in other OpenStack services to provide user notifications, notifications between services, and just a better user experience. Um, the, the new features in WebSockets have made it easier to provide notifications to clients, whether that's a command line client, a web browser client, Horizon, looking at you. Uh, when you create a server in the web UI of Horizon, if you want to wait for that server to, com to complete, you're refreshing that page, or you're going to get a coffee and then coming back and maybe wasting some time there. No commentary. So uh, in, the, in a world where you use a car for notifications, your Horizon dashboard would hook up to WebSockets. And over that WebSocket connection, it would receive notifications when your Nova resource is ready, when your heat stack is ready, uh, when your, glan when your uh, glance image is ready to be used. And for other things, like if you need a notification for a very long running job and you're going to leave your computer, email notifications might be what you need because you can get that on your phone, you can get that anywhere you need, anywhere you, uh, need it. Or for legacy systems that don't have uh, very many options for getting data in, email might be one ingest mechanism there. And for more modern services that have webhook support, Zakar supports webhooks and will uh, call out to any other service, and so it can be a uh, service outside of open, OpenStack, it can be your CI system if that has web socket or uh, webhook support. And um, inside of OpenStack, there are a lot of services that cooperate. Heat is a great example because it cooperates with just about every OpenStack service. So it, right now, has to poll every OpenStack service and if those services had a uh, used as a car or a similar technology as a notification bus, it would reduce the amount of work that Heat has to do, and it would reduce the amount of load that is put on these other services by Heat. And in, in this situation, this is where you would have a, lo a longer time to live. As, of, as Vicky mentioned, you can adjust that based on your use case. In the notifications case earlier, you might have notifications only live for a few minutes because knowing that your Nova server from three weeks ago is ready is not all that helpful if you haven't opened the Horizon dashboard lately and you get it three weeks late. So you would have a shorter TTL for that kind of message where in service collaboration, you want to be sure that a service that needs that message, if it goes offline, can still get it from Zakar when it comes back, whether that's down for maintenance, upgrade, or uh, something else unforeseen. Um, the use case that exists right now for Zakar is Heat. Uh, inside of Heat, you can provide a Zakar queue, and Heat, while it's creating your stack, uh, for the, how many people have used Heat, actually? 
OK, so pretty good. So heat uh, collects a group of resources that you declare into what's called a stack. And so you hand heat this specification for a stack. Uh, that's called a stack create. And then heat will look at all those resources and create all of them and eventually get, uh, have them all created and tell you that the stack is complete. Um, until adding Zakar support, it didn't have a way to push that notification to you. And without that, you would have to either refresh, the sta refresh your horizon dashboard, uh, keep running the stack status command line command. Neither of these are very good options. So with Zakar, heat creates the stack. And then for every resource that it creates, it sends a Zakar event saying what resource it is, what the new status of the resource is, its physical ID, and any extra status information that exists for that resource. And as a listener to that over either WebSockets or by polling Zakar or by getting those notifications over email, you can react to those either by saying, yay, my stack is done, or um, by regis programmatically registering those resources with a load balancer, with a monitoring system, with your inventory system, with your chargeback billing system, if you have that inside of your organization. And uh, getting all of that is actually as easy as adding just these four lines to your environment.yaml file. And what this is is an event sync is anywhere heat is able to send an event. And you can have as many of these as you want on a stack. And you'd specify how long the message lives uh, in the TTL, the type, which is the Zakar queue, and the target for the messages, which is uh, your queue name. So in the future, he could, could use, these, uh, use the same process that it's using for notifications for hooks. Um, if you're familiar with breakpoints in your IDE, where you get to set a spot at any line of code, and the execution will stop right there and let you examine uh, the state of things, that's what hooks provide at the cloud level for heat. So in heat, you specify a breakpoint that happens, say, after a, certain, uh, after a certain resource is created. And at that point, heat will wait for user intervention and for you to tell heat that it's OK to continue. So this, would, this is useful for if you're debugging a heat template and you don't know why it doesn't work, or if there's some manual action that needs to happen before heat can continue creating the rest of the resources. And with Zakar, you wouldn't have to ask Heat, have you hit any breakpoints yet? Have you hit any breakpoints yet? Have you hit any breakpoints yet? You would listen on this Zakar queue. And when you were done, you would send a completion message to that same Zakar queue. And Heat would get that notification pushed to it, making your overall time for you know, debugging Heat stacks or doing any kind of manual intervention upgrades uh, much faster. Um, the other use case that we're going to talk about is Zakar for Internet of Things concept, context. And as uh, I'm sure everyone attended the keynotes and saw both Volkswagen and uh, Smart Cities talking about having different sensors and different, uh, different commands being able to be sent back out to smart devices to save energy or save time or increase the life of those devices or just... Um, have, a better, have better insight into how climate control and things like that are used in your city. Um, and with the Internet of Things, you have these devices that are out there. You can't take them back. Someone has bought them. They've gone home. And in that device, you have to, it has to have the ability to talk to your service in a way that you trust allowing the client to have. Because if I bought a smart car, a smart thermostat, a smart anything, I have the ability to take it apart. It's in my house. I have a toolbox downstairs. And so I can take it apart. I can dissect it. I can look at everything that's inside of that device, including the computer, including the data that is on the computer in that device. And so what Zakar's signed URL process, or signed URL feature, rather, allows you to, to do is give very specific granular permissions to being able to send or receive data from Zakar. And those subscriptions, or those um, signed URLs, come with a time to live, just like all these other Zakar resources we've been talking about. And so your internet, and so your device can renew these credentials, but if it doesn't renew them, you don't have keys floating around that just grant access rent, uh, to anyone. 
And there's use cases for both a write-only and a read-only queue. If you have a, a metric system that's sending in telemetry data from your smart car, like your GPS coordinates, so you can track them and track mileage, and uh, keep, just keep an eye on the, on the uh, mechanical systems in there. You don't want every car to be able to see the data from every other car. And this is a great case for a write-only queue. So you have one queue where all of the metrics data collects. And each car has the ability to write to that queue, but not the ability to read. So you don't have any privacy concerns about other device owners being able to see, see data from other devices that you haven't processed and they don't have permissions to see. And for the other side, read-only queues, that could be for commands. It could be for information like uh, there's a software update. So when you're connected to Wi-Fi, go over the network, get that update, and uh, flash it onto your firmware or what, whatever. And so that's where signed URLs are a really good fit for both any, any untrusted endpoint. So whether that's inside of like a Trove service or an untrusted physical endpoint that's living in someone's house. And as I mentioned, sensor data, that actually presents some unique challenges because sensor data is high volume because if you sell um, if your GE or some other device manufacturer are 5,000 devices, sell like that. So if you've got 5,000 devices in the wild that are checking in every minute, every five minutes, that's a, that gets to be a pretty large number of requests as you add more and more devices. And Zakar is built to scale out with that. Uh, like we mentioned, our, store, our different storage backends and the ability to add more Zakar servers to receive messages. So you can balance the load from all of your devices and all of your customers across as many Zakar servers as you need to handle that. And so Zakar has, uh, has the high volume data covered. And for metrics data, usually it's not a big deal if any device doesn't check in. It can be out of cell service. Uh, it could be just turned off. Or it could be out of batteries. Or in uh, the case of your application, your application could be under maintenance. And if you miss that five minutes or however long your downtime window is of telemetry, that's actually OK. And you can keep your storage requirements in Zakar low by allowing uh, all of this data to be, have a very short TTL. So if it's not picked up within a few minutes, it doesn't fill up your disk and uh, raise your storage costs. So the example application that we're going to talk about today is a climate control system. Uh, in the demo, in the keynote, that was actually also a climate control demo. But in this, in this application, we were imagining a company that has a series of offices maybe spread over the globe. And each of those has different uh, zones in their, in, in their uh, climate control system. And the company wants to have visibility into how that's being used across, across the organization and be able to uh, have some automated systems turn off or turn down the climate control when it's late at night, when they're off peak hours and power is cheaper or uh, whatever business reason there might be there. And of course, it's better for the planet because you're using less uh, climate control, so less energy. Um, this is just a, um, a diagram of the architecture. We have uh, HTTP connections for pushing because those, uh, all of these devices on the left there uh, that you see, the mobile app, the thermostat, and the web interface aren't persistently connected necessarily. And so someone might open the mobile app on their phone and send out a command, and it will go out to the Zakar server and send that message. And then Zakar over WebSockets will push that, um, that information down to the uh, air conditioning units. Um, and the air conditioning units can use that same WebSocket connection. So it's very efficient. They can uh, use the binary format to reduce compute requirements, and uh, the WebSocket uh, remaining open means you don't have to keep reconnecting and opening new uh, TCP and HTTP connections. So when someone does change something, and this is from a thermostat on a wall, they set the temperature to in centigrade because OpenStack is an international project, even though we are in America. Um, those notifications go out to the, to the uh, AC units, and they uh, receive those, run that through whatever, um, whatever compute they need to do, and when someone goes to check the temperature, either on the thermostat, mobile app, web interface, they'll grab the latest metric data straight from Zakar. They don't actually have to hit your server because you can use your, a JavaScript library locally in that web interface. 
to his car and get the latest telemetry data from, the, um, from those AC units. And so people can see why they feel like they need a sweatshirt so bad. And being able to have this kind of visibility is also great if you want to add automation on top. So this might only be a first step in developing like, your climate control system. Um, first step is replace the thermostat, get it online, get your devices online, get your data online, look at your historical trends, and start adding automation to, uh, that might look, in the look at the weather in advance and adjust climate control ahead so that, you're, uh, so that people aren't over adjusting the thermostat and wasting energy, or adjust it so that more of your climate control is happening at off-peak time so you're saving uh, money on energy, which is also great. And so now we're going to open it up for Q&A. Since this is streamed, we have two microphones over there. And so if you do have uh, questions about Zakar or about any of the examples in the presentation, we would love to hear them. And uh, thank you very much. You can re hit uh, both of us up on Twitter, and I'll be posting the slides later. So, hey, this is a question um, about the transports and what backends are supported. So I, I tried to use Redis with the WebSockets and I hit an issue. Is that officially supported? Uh, yes, it should be officially supported. So we would like to hear a uh, bug for that. Because the idea is that every, every layer uh, that we have, we have the transport layer and then the API and then below that the storage layers. All of those should be mix and match. So you can you know, use WSGI against Redis on our V1 API. You can use WebSocket against MongoDB on the V2 API. And that should all work. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Please reach us later uh, with the issue you found. So maybe we can help you debug it. Uh, Quick question. So, Zucker supported Redis cluster or Redis Sentinel both? Um, so, the way that uh, we, we don't actually uh, de uh, dictate how you set up your Redis cluster. In, uh, in Zakar, we use the Redis connection string. And because of how Redis, uh, Redis clustering works, that's all we need. And so, it's the operator's job to decide whether they want to set up Redis clustering or even have Redis persist to disk. But our default is to just use standalone Redis with in-memory store. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll be around in the hallway if you want to chat. And OpenStack Zakar on Freenode. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.